Hey, Jen. Well, Bob, how are you? Good. Right. Good. How are we with uh, quorum? We now have a quorum. We're good to go. So I would like to, um, no worries. Glad to have you here. I'd like to open the public hearing. And why don't we just start from the top? We've got a continuation of 475 Park Street, which is a special permit. Let's see where to go. Continued public hearing will be held by teleconference virtual meeting on Thursday, September 15th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Cindy <coughs> Abdelita, 475 Park Street, North Reading, MA map for parcel 36 for a special permit to raise chickens. We opened this hearing uh, last month, uh, but then through the hearing, we realized that the notices had not gotten out to the abutters. Um, so we continued, so the applicant would have an opportunity to get those notices out. My understanding is, Kathy, you've gotten the, the slips back on those notices? Yes, I did. All right, so we are good to go on that. Um, Kathy, if you want to just put up the plan that shows where the proposed coop would be. And last month we had an abutter who had some concerns. Um, I think everyone could see the plan up on the on your screen showing shed about, about one o'clock, top right corner of the plan. Do we have any um, anyone from the public who wanted to comment or who had questions on this? I have one question. Uh, this is David Law, <clears throat> 29 Dwayne Drive, but also CPC. Um, in the aerial, it shows a driveway, a, a dirt stone driveway up to the street on the right hand side. Is that driveway still there? Can we have the uh, fair question? Can the applicant? advise on that and honestly I've got to look at my bigger plan because I can't see it on the is it right here yeah it's still there that one does that go to what does it go to so I see the driveway off Park Street and Right, but I think there is is the comment to the one right that you're using with the cursor now. Is that a layout of a of a cut driveway, or is that just gradations? Because it looks like by the photo that those are just grades. The, yeah, I, th I think those are just the top of right. So I think I think whatever was, I can't. I mean, I don't think there's anything to the right that's shown on that drawing. I can't make a distinction between. Yeah, it's not, I'm not saying that it's in the drawing. All that's shown here are contour lines. Mm -hmm. right. What I'm saying is there's a driveway, a stone driveway that starts in the, off the street and goes okay. all the way to the backyard right in, the, in the aerial. Oh. And, and you could just see it on Google Maps. It comes right up. I think Cindy's daughter said it's still there. I'm not seeing. There's a, it's like a gravel driveway right off Park Street. So it's paved on the left and gravel on the right. I'm not sure that's yeah. that. So I'm I'm having a 
tough time seeing what you're looking at on that plan. Do you think the, the aerial gives a better, better picture of that, Dave? Yeah, because it's not on the plan. So that's why I was just asking okay. if it's on the area, but it's not on the plan. Be happy to zoom in, uh, share the screen and show mine. That would be great. Kathy, if you can hand the screen that's over it. today for a second. Thank you. Talk about this right here. Okay. So um, for the applicant, I mean, just this question is, is that for the current current layout, are there the two, essentially two curb cuts into Park Street? And it's really, it's, um, we can get that for your information, but it's really not within our scope of this particular application. Right, it just goes back to the accuracy <clears throat> of the plan that an applicant is issuing. That's that's all I'm I'm trying to find out is 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 this plan accurately represents what what the board is being presented with as well as the CPC because we're presented with this too. And it looks like that's that's a that's an excavator at the rear of the property. It appears that they're doing the the um septic septic system the septic field out there. That's that's what that appears to me. I went out there and I did not see that driveway. Which so, it, so there, there, there the may be a pathway, but there was no actual. I didn't see an actual driveway. Do so you think the photo is just representing a um, the, the aerial photo is just? A, well, I'm just saying it's a curb, not a curb cut, because I think they need a permit for that. But I mean, there's a it is a road. This the wall stops, and then it goes down there. I mean, if any one of you know, Jerry, you you know it well too. If you're going to go do and put a you know a system in, you you end up, you know, you don't put in, you don't put in what we just were looking at just to put in this in this septic system. You don't put in a road base like that just to go back and do a septic system. You go put the septic system in, back out of there, comb it out with loam, and see you later. But that's all I'm asking. <clears throat> Fair enough. Can we have an application? If anybody knows me on the CPC, I'm just a stickler for plans being accurate. I think all the meeting minutes will show that whenever I see a plan and it doesn't match what I'm looking at with just the other public information, I just ask the question. If the applicant, you know, says it's not a road, that's on record, you know, or driveway, then it's on record. So since we have the applicant here, maybe they can give us some insight on this since, uh... And I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Dave. That, that was only made for the to clean the septic when they were cleaning it. It's not a road or like a driveway. Has that been restored? Is the stone wall back up or the whatever was disturbed put back in? Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Has has that area been restored? I think the Concern from CPC is that there's a second access coming off Park Street. Oh um, no, that it hasn't been like um, nothing has. We haven't done anything to that. Um, it that it was already like that when we bought that when they bought the house. So. So did they have to replace the septic system when you bought the house? Yeah. Which would make sense and to pass Title Five. That would have to be done. Right. I think you know, for our instant hearing, um, if we're just focusing on the request for chickens, we can do that. Um, and then Jerry, it's sort of been flagged for you. If there's an issue with access, uh, an additional curb cut off of Park Street. Um, we raised that to your attention, uh, but I believe you said you had been out and looked at the property and you did not, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Jerry, can you remind me you were out there, correct? Yes, I was. And I didn't, I, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. All I did see was 
the property could be kept up a, a little bit better. That was about it. Fair enough. Um, thank, thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Uh, and just for the record, the, the photos that we're looking at on Google, Google are from March of this year. So they're not that old. Six months. <clears throat> Thanks, Dave. Yeah, just throw it through. I have nothing else. Yeah, the photos that were submitted with the packet. Um, from the commissioner don't seem to show that as a that gravel access being there it could have been beyond the beyond the, sh the photo lens but i don't see that in the in the current photos all right um anyone else to as our neighbor or our butter back with us today I don't um, see him listed. All right. Being said to my board members, anyone else have any uh, questions for the applicant or concerns about this? <laughs> right. How many chickens is the request for? Um, for My recollection from the last meeting was that they actually already had them, correct? That is correct. That's my understanding as well. Ms. Aguera, can you tell us how many chickens you currently have at the property? I have six left. Six left, all right. And we typically, you know, people usually request or often request somewhere around six to eight. That's fairly typical. Um, if, from my perspective on this, if the coop is set back from the lot lines as required, Required by our bylaws, um, and there's adequate provision for them to be cooped and not uh, free range. That's fairly consistent with what we've seen throughout town. It is, of course, subject to Board of Health regulations. And um, if we were to grant something, you would still need to go to Board of Health because they're the ones who make sure that all of the um, compost is pre uh, properly dealt with and that it's an appropriate setting for health and welfare of chickens. So Jerry, I know that um, on a letter dated uh, September 13th to um, regarding the agenda for tonight, you made bullet points on five. And of those five, Madam Chair made reference generally to more than several of them, but I think one of the matters was the enclosure of the file be constructed and with what this is not optional, but a requirement is usually determined at the time of the application. And I know that at our last meeting, the abutter, Mr. Canal, I believe it was, made note that his only concern regarding the coop itself was um, the maintenance of the, of, the, of the chickens, the fowl, if you will, from just running free range, no pun intended. So um, maybe you might want to, um, um, I know this was brought to the attention of, of the board. I'm assured that it's, I'm certain that it's also known by the applicant, but do you have any further insights or thoughts on this during the application the, uh, tonight? You know, the, uh, the health agent and I, just to give you a little bit of, um, history on that, uh, the health agent and I basically go out together and we take a look to see how the coop is set up. We also take a look at the uh, how it's constructed, and I want to make sure that it is constructed properly. I don't want somebody walking in there, and next thing you know, uh, um, 
somebody gets injured and or a child next door um, just happens onto the property or gets injured as well. So um, the, these are the things that we do uh, look for. So the applicant should actually make application for an accessory structure to the building department. Thank you, Jerry. All right. Um, so you've you've looked. <laughs> it's an existing structure. You've looked at it. Are we? Are you comfortable with the structure that's there, or are you looking for this applicant to come in and re? Get put a new coop up. I have not actually walked onto a property and actually seen the structure. I need to have a permit on the property in order for me just to walk on freely. Um, so normally I would go to the door and ask for permission. I did go to the door um, and there was nobody home to grant per permission to go into their backyard. Um, so no, I have not seen this actual structure. Fair, fair enough. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for the clarification. This one's the um, been just a little, little convoluted from, from the get go. I think we need to, to close the hearing on this and, and make a motion one way or the other. Um, uh, so we can move on with the agenda this evening. Okay. Would any of my members care to make a motion? I don't have the application in front of me, but the, was there a number requested? Um, the applicant just said that they have six. So I would suggest that we put a limit of six. And as far as the process, Madam Chair, the uh, given the fact that they already have them, um, that they're in something, that Jerry um, has yet had permission to go inspect, would the process be that if we move forward, we would grant and that one of the uh, conditions would be um, that they would have to file um, for the, the building permit for the structure? I would say at least that they need to get approval from Board of Health and building inspector on the quality of and adequacy of that structure. I don't want, to, I don't know how long it has been there and don't, you know, there, are, there are certain issues with that. Um, so we can look at it separately as a and, and this is, uh, to be clear, this is not the first person who has come to us who already has a coop and who already has chickens and are now have been told that, no, you just can't do it. You need to get permits for it. And we have <coughs> approved or not um, at that point. So we have not in any other case where someone had an existing coop then sent them back to get a building permit for their coop. Um, and I think this generally the coops would be, you know, not of a size to trigger a, a, a building permit, but that, you know, again, I, we're going based on a sketch plan mm -hmm. with shed marked in pencil on the back. So with the information we have, um, I would say if we were to grant this, um, suggestions would be to limit it to the number the six hens, no roosters, um, and to include all of the conditions from Mr. Noel's memo of September 13th, in term, which is just, again, bullets and confirms the requirements of our bylaws if you are to have chickens. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion regarding the matter of um, the application for the petition of uh, Cindy Arguda, 475 Park Street, North Reading, 
Massachusetts map for parcel 36 for a special permit to raise chicken. I move to grant a special permit to raise up to and no more than six chickens at 475 Park Street, North Reading, uh, with the condition that the coop abiding by all, <clears throat> excuse me, public, public health and uh, building department requirements and regulations to be for purposes of zoning to be located no closer than 20 feet to the front line, no closer than 10 feet from the side and rear lot lines as shown on the plan submitted uh, as is the case, uh, no roosters are to be permitted or allowed. And again, all conditions for the maintenance and uh, raising and <clears throat> maintenance of the, of the fowl is subject to um, Board of Health approvals and oversights. <clears throat> and I'll second the motion. Thank you, all in favor? Bob um, Breen, aye. Vincent Ragucci, aye. Jennifer Platt, aye. All right. So for the applicant, just to confirm, it the right to have chickens has the use has been approved by this board, but it is subject to review and approval by the Board of Health. Um, you can get that permit from Kathy after a or from the town clerk after a 20 day appeal period. Right. Thank you. Moving on here, um, 172 Park Street has withdrawn. They have figured a way to do that without a variance. So we are very happy that that was resolved. On 110 Main Street. That was 110 Main Street. Oh, no. 110 Main Street. Let me just get to the hearing notice here. So for 110, continued virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, September 15th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Sean Ferris, representative for RECR Realty LLC, 110 Main Street, North Reading, MA, on the appeal of the decision of the building commissioner for the timetable to comply at 110 Main Street, Map 24, Parcel 6, North Reading, MA. Um, just a quick recap. This is our friends at Reading Lumber, and there were a couple of businesses, parking equipment, and up front of the property. When we were here last time, our applicant was in the process of getting those off the property. Are, is, do we have someone from 110? Main Street here to give us an update. I think Sean, Sean Ferris just came on. I'm sorry, Kathy, I couldn't hear that. I said, I think Sean Ferris just joined the meeting. Lovely. His timing would be impeccable if that is the case. I think you're muted, Sean. Yep. Um, hi, I'm here. I'm sorry about that. That was perfect timing, um, Sean. We just read you into yep. the meeting. Uh, can, can you give us an update of where things stand? Uh, yeah, I just got out of a meeting around five o'clock um, uh, with the owners of Running Lumber. Um, and I have East Coast Tree. Uh, they're already uh, moving their stuff out. Uh, they will, we're all in agreement that they will have everything broom swept completely out of there uh, before the 30th of September. Um, and that's, you know, so everything on the left side of the lot is satisfied. And then uh, some of the issues, uh, some tenants on the right hand side, uh, I'm going to uh, speak to the um, those tenants there as well as uh, uh, the planning board and maybe have something uh, as long as their business is essential to their existing business, the running lumber, um, they'll either uh, some will relocate, some's gonna uh, go in front and ask for permission to uh, 
to show how their business uh, goes in hand with Reading Lumber. And, uh, and I had a meeting uh, with Jerry early this afternoon to explain the situation where uh, we're at with, with uh, uh, on 110 Main Street. So everything on the left side will be all cleared out that they were notified on that. So we are making great progress on that. And uh, as far as relocating to some of the other tenants, um, we're working on that, um, but that shouldn't be a problem for the ones that want, wish to stay there. They'd have to put an application with the community planning department for a permit. Okay. So, And the, one of the, the reason we've kept this hearing open and we haven't closed it and voted is that we are looking to work with the owner and to have some progress made. Um, but, you know, it's not a never ending yeah. process. Well, easy. I mean, they had 22 uh, pieces of equipment. You're going in and out, Sean. Vehicles there. And uh, I think that, yeah, I can't decide that 22 no, pieces Sean, we, of we don't have a good connection there. And there's probably about four. Can you hear me now? That's better. Thank you. Um, yes. You, got you might want to, if you want to take off your, um, your video, I don't know if that might help with the, the buffering or the... <clears throat> But we're not getting to hear you. Is it? Is it? Can you hear me now? That's better. Much better. Thank okay. you, Sean. Thanks. So for East Coast uh, Tree, they had 22 pieces of uh, equipment there, and I think they're down to like six pieces and stuff. Just clean up what they have there, and they agreed. Um, everything will be out on. Uh, uh, will be out before the 30th of the month, not the 30th, but before the 30th and all be cleaned up. Everything, anything that might be erosion, the wetlands or fell into it, all that would be, um, you know, carried out or, you know, cleaned up nice on the left-hand side. And then we are working, I talked to the owners, uh, Red uh, Lumber this afternoon after, um, and a couple of their tenants there, community planning, to have something in the back part away away from the front of the street. And that's where they're at with that. So I would I would like to see if um, if we were to continue this till next month, that by next month there are applications in front of CPC that that has started. Yes. They, um, and that's underway because this is really um, well, we were addressing the uh, the violation on the left hand side that they were notified on, and then we halfway through, like a couple months into it, we realized they were having issues with the people on the right hand side, the people parking there as well. So the initial violation only addressed the left hand side of the lots. So. Um, had a meeting uh, with the I, uh, just, owner. To, just to, to jump in there, I'm just I'm looking at the May two cease and desist order. This is from May, so we, we yeah. have a little bit of time here, um, but it does refer to the equipment on the left and right side of the front of the property. And um, Kathy, I just want to make yeah, I, um. Can you tell me when the appeal was filed? I just want us to make sure we're keeping track of our dates and we don't um, go past 180 in terms of making a decision. So we do have, we've got a limit of how long that we can keep this hearing open and continue to uh, discuss. It was filed May 24th. All right, so next month, I think we're gonna to need to 
close this out just so you know. Okay. Um, and we appreciate, at least I, we, the board very much appreciates what you are doing, um, but also recognize that you know, we're, we're four months in, so. Okay. And I, I don't mean to, um, I definitely want to open this up to my, to the building inspector who is here with us as well as the board to see if anyone has other comments. The only comment I have is um, relative to the heavy equipment. It's not pro, it's, it's prohibited. So I don't know how CPC can issue something that's prohibited. <clears throat> um, uh, so what they would have to do is they would have to go before CPC and try to get um, uh, changes to the zoning bylaws. And of course that would go have to go before a town meeting. Um, I don't know any other way that they could do that. And I thought I fully explained that to Mr. Ferris earlier, um, but I guess uh, a little bit may have been lost because we spoke of a lot of different things, so. <clears throat> So, yeah, and, and that is that's absolutely true to the extent of the, if they are looking just to store heavy equipment, there's that's not going to be a option under our bylaws. That's correct. So, but if there is some other, if there's storage of materials, that can be allowed with the approval of CPC. That's correct. Bob, Vincent, any other thoughts on this one? Sorry about that. I was a mute. Um, that, that was the question I was, I was interested in knowing the strategy going forward. For a practical purpose, we might want to establish <clears throat> our next meeting date only because since he is on is within just somewhere over the uh, remaining 60 days on on the process uh given this filing date uh in may of 2022 um you know it looks like if we stay with the middle of the month meeting this could you know afford getting it through the um the end of this month if their cleanup is completed and then permitting um with a window of a safety net. So just as a practical person, <coughs> practical matter, Madam Chair, if we just want to schedule in the at least the October meeting now so we have an idea of our own calendar. How does, and it's between you and me and then Maria, but um, how's the 13th look? The, the 13th available for me, thank you. And, uh, I think that gives us a time frame for um, maintaining um, uh, the timeline. Uh, the timeline, both for uh, appl the applicant and for our responses in the town, effectively. Right. That sounds good to me. So. Um, if there's nothing further, what we'd like to do is see if the applicant would like to request a continuation of this to our next meeting on October 13th. Um, and then come back to us with any final update before we close out this year. Yeah, October 13th is fine. Great. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. We appreciate your work getting this cleaned up and we're hoping to have a big a big reveal a month from now that this has been actually been completed yes all right thank you thank you, Bye. Thank you Sean. Bye. all right and um here we go let's see moving on I 
142 Main Street. I believe they were looking to request, let me just, oh, sorry, open the public hearing. Um, virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, September 15th, 2022 at 7 p.m. on petition of 142 Main Street LLC, <coughs> care of law offices of Richard D. D. Girolamo. I'm sorry, I said that wrong, but for a special permit to run a landscaping business and or stone business located at 142 Main Street, North Reading, MA, map 25, parcel three. And we have um, council there. Yes. Back of the applicant. Yes. Good evening. Can you give us a quick update of where things are from where we uh, met? Uh, sure. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Rich D. Girolamo, 424 Broadway, Summer on behalf of the applicant. Um, we had re we have requested an, a, a continuance on this matter uh, for approximately a month. Uh, we at, at your previous meeting at which uh, I appeared, which was back in July, uh, a number of issues were identified, um, which necessitated us having to do a site plan, um, the intent of which was to go back before the CPC. Um, and in that regard, we retained LNT Engineering, uh, who began the work, uh, however, um, had to ass essentially suspend the work because they were too busy with some other larger projects, forcing us to then retain another uh, civil engineer, Rick Salvo, which we began working with recently, uh, but who has not yet completed the plan uh, and therefore uh, we, we are requesting that this matter be put over um, for two meetings uh, with the hope of coming back before you and addressing the issues that were raised at the uh, July meeting and ultimately going back before the CPC. Have you filed with the CPC yet? We have not because we need we need a plan and we we don't have that plan. Right. Nor can we grant a special permit without saying how the property would be used. Um, you may have heard what we were telling the last applicant. We are always looking to work with applicants and um, get you to a to. A, some sort of agreeable outcome, but we don't want to just keep kicking these things down the road. Uh, understood. Yeah, understood. If the board would be so gracious as to grant us that this continuous, we will. We promise we will stay on this and make every effort to uh, appear before you at, at the. I think you said it was the October thirteenth meeting, um, and the intent of which would be to at that point. Uh, address the issues that were previously raised. I don't I don't see a problem with that. Anyone else? No, no problem. Um, I would ask that as you get your plans done, if you would submit those into Kathy, she's very good at getting those to us um, in advance. So we have a chance to review things before hearings. Um, just makes it easier. Easier yeah, ab absolutely. We will make sure that that gets them. Fantastic. So, would you like to request a continuation until October 13th? Yes, please. All right. We look forward to seeing you and your plans a month from now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Man, you're going to be missing some exciting stuff next month. I know. You're, you're welcome to uh, pop in. <laughs> All right. Last yeah. but, be a spectator. Last but not least, up to 25 Maple Road. Hearing notice, virtual teleconference public hearing will be held on Thursday, September 15, 2022 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Smith Sons Plumbing and Heating, Inc., represented by attorney Joseph Keyes regarding the property located at 25 Maple Road, 
North Reading MA, MAP 43, parcel 23, owned by Tracy Ann Jagino to appeal the decision of the building commissioner, commissioner for a single lot exemption. All right. And just while before we let hand this over to Attorney Keys, yeah. there was a I'm sort of curious the way this our hearing notice was written to appeal the decision of the building commissioner for a single lot exemption. Whereas, see the building commissioner has written to us. Well, you know what, Mr. Keys, I'm gonna just let you give us an overview. <clears throat> sure, thank you, uh, members of the board. Uh, we're here tonight on 25 Maple Road. Smith Sons Plumbing and Heating has entered into a contract with uh, Tracy Janino to buy the property at 25 Maple Street. Um, I submitted a, a plan to Kathy uh, earlier this afternoon. I'm not sure if it's available to look yeah, at. I can put it up. Hold on. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, I'll put it up. Yeah. And while that's, while that's happening, uh, basically what we're looking for is some clarification. Um, I sent in also a letter from the, uh, here, oh, here we go. And it's tough, I had it highlighted, but when you copy this stuff, it really doesn't show up. So I, I, I took a pen and went around the, the, the dimensions of the lot. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. So it consists of these lots 53, 53 A, B, and C, lot 55, 55 A, B, and C. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these little slices uh, that make up this lot. It's about 2.2 .2 acres according to the uh, assessor's um, information online. And uh, essentially what we're looking for is some clarification. I have two letters that I also had submitted um, one is a letter from the old building inspector, uh, James DeCola, dated February 14th, 2018, um, in which he says that he reviewed the application for a separate lot exemption from current zoning requirements. Under 40A section six, this lot does meet the grandfathering status pertaining to zoning requirements. However, this does not guarantee that a building permit will be issued. Um, when uh, Bill Smith went to go see Jerry, Jerry sent us an email that says, uh, per the table of dimensional and density regulations within our zoning bylaws, the subject property would meet the requirements for a buildable lot. Um, so we went through, we, we did all the research and as far as the lot is concerned, we're not, we're not talking about a building permit. We're not talking about safe and adequate access or anything else like that at this point. All we're interested in is the zoning board giving us a determination um, that the lot falls under the exemption of uh, 40A, Section 6, and it's also exempt under the uh, town zoning bylaws, which I had in front of me a minute ago, uh, Article 4, Section 200-8. That's all we're looking for tonight. Um, the requirements of 40A section six, there's basically a checklist that the town has gone over a number of times um, with the board. Um, in fact, I remember being on the board a number of years ago when that happened. So there's basically four, four things to determine whether or not uh, 40A section six applies. Um, the lot has to be uh, for a single family or two family residential use, which we meet. Um, at the time of the recording of the plan that I'm showing you here, uh, the property could not be held in common ownership with other lots. Um, I provided the board with uh, the titles to all the abutting lots showing that going all the way back, I wanna say until the early 1920s before, prior to zoning, uh, that this lot was never held jointly with any other lot. It's always been separate since 1918. And um, it, can, it has to conform with uh, the existing requirements at the time. And 
at the time this plan was filed, there were no requirements. And then it has to have at least 5,000 square feet of area, which we meet, and 50 feet of frontage, which we, which we meet. The, the property has at least 200 feet of frontage. Um, so we feel that we uh, meet the grandfathering status under 48, section six. Uh, we also feel that we meet the, um, the exception under article four, section 200-8, as um, the lot needs to exist, it, it's very general the way the bylaw reads. And it says, you know, with a few exceptions um, that um, zoning doesn't apply to a lot that exists prior to zoning. Um, with the exceptions, and it goes through, it lists them 200-10D, E, 200-12, 200-17, and 200-20. Um, without getting into huge detail about those, they all pertain to basically obtaining a building permit, which we're not here for. We're not, neither building inspector said, denied us a building permit. So we obviously we can't appeal that. So really all we're looking <coughs> for from the zoning board is a determination that this lot as it sits meets the grandfathering status and is exempt as it sits under 200-8. All right. Um, well, I haven't had a chance to go through what was submitted this afternoon. I don't know if my board members have. And so I know we would need time to do that. Um, and the question that comes to my mind is if the lot is compliant with zoning, you know, the dimensional requirements, which the commissioner has said that it is, why are we looking to now grandfather what has is now a conforming lot but you know perhaps for the issue of access which is not under our purview that's cpc simply because we don't want to give up any rights that we may have that we haven't really figured out yet does that perhaps seem um premature it might be, but why would I why would I want to say that I need to conform to the dimensional and, and density requirements if I don't have? Because I thought that once you had a lot and that it was that, conforming, but, that you didn't get the benefit of then trying to go retroactive and be grandfathered. That that may be, but that's not what we're asking. All we're asking. No, then we, uh, and and it's something I mean clearly we'd have to, I would would have to look into, but I don't know that you can have the benefit of being grandfathered or claiming that once you have a conforming lot. Possibly, I. but but again, my client just wants to determine that this lot does, it, it predates zoning. Mm -hmm. And let's just say, for example, that the topography of the lot is such that we need to squeeze the the building up into the top left hand corner where we wouldn't meet the front yard setback or the side yard setback. Why would I, if, if it's a pre existing non conforming lot and that's the only place I could put it, I'd rather be grandfathered than have to come before the board and ask for a variance. Yeah, and, and well. But again, yeah. and, and we may be putting the cart before the horse a little bit here. I understand what you're getting at, but all we're looking for now is, is you know, what, what I said is that it, that it meets grandfathering and that, uh, you know, we're exempt from 200-8 as it just sits, you know. The other provisions that we would be subject to um, would protect you for other things because it all follow it all falls down to the determination of the building inspector you know for example if we went in for a building in, a building permit the building inspector under 200-10d would need to determine that the change of whatever use it's a, it's a, it's a regular lot now if we were to put a, a house on it he needs to determine whether or not that's a more conforming non-conforming excuse me use of the property um you know he would also uh moving forward if we were to build a house we'd be subject to zoning we understand that but right now we just want a determination that the lot 
is exempt. So 208 deals with uses and structures. Yep. We have neither a use nor a structure at the moment. I disagree. We have a use as a residential use. As a lot. Yep. Residential building lot is the use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, this is uh, Dave Rudloff. I, I'm looking at it as well, and I kind of agree with you. It says uses or structures lawfully in existence or lawfully begun or to a building permit or special permit issued before first publication, mm -hmm. notice of blah, blah, blah. I mean, the use is in existence, but it's, if there's nothing yeah. on it, you know, I'm not, right. so not. I would not disagree that you are a existing residential use and may continue right. as a residential use, but I don't think that gives you a blanket stamp of you are grandfathered for everything else in this I, I'm not asking for that. Okay. So I would say you're a residential use. I would say that as well. All right. Yeah. Beyond that, I'm not really clear. <laughs> and, 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 and we're not asking for anything beyond that. We understand that the next step would be to talk to the building inspector with our plans of what we would want to do with the lot. And then he would be the gatekeeper from there on. He may or may not say you need to go before CPC for that, in which at which point we would. I, I don't know that we are, when, we, when I say that, in my opinion, not speaking for the board as a whole, that, well, actually, is it a residential use? What, what indicia of it being residential use do we have? It's a plan in the RA district on a, on a it's, it's a lot on a plan in existence prior to zoning in the RA district. I believe it's in the RA district. Yeah. RA district, yep. I don't see that, what that, yeah, and I'm not seeing what that gets you. That's well, the allowed it, use it, here. It doesn't, we're not, we're, <laughs> Believe me, we're not trying to do anything underhanded here or anything else like that. We're not trying to get away with anything. All we're looking for is that determination because again, I have a letter in 2018 from the building inspector that says it's grandfathered. And I have an email from a building inspector saying that it meets current bylaws. I want one or the other. I prefer the one in 2018. Yeah. And that's why we're appealing the current letter that we received. That's, that, that's the only reason we're appealing it. My recollection is once you come into conformity, you lose your grandfathered protection, um, but that's something that I would want to confirm. So I would not personally be in a position to um, vote this one way or the other, but that is my, my recollection from having gone through some of these fun grandfather um, <coughs> cases before. And usually when we see this before, you know, when, when I had experience on the board for this, we, we were talking undersized lots, you know. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between those lots and these lots is this is not an undersized lot. And we would, like I said before, before we give up any rights on this lot, we, we want to explore fully what we could do legally with the lot. And just to start off, all we're looking to do is identify that the lot is pre-existing non-conforming. Well, and actually it's a pre-existing, excuse me, just a pre-existing lot. It exists prior to zoning and therefore it's not subject to the dimensional and uh, density requirements under 40A, section six. I think I, I'm having a hard time with that, but I am, I'm happy to, to look at what you guys submitted. Bob Finn? Anybody? 
so my concern is similar to that you it it's grandfathered in and it's present in the petitioner's view of it now but once he breaks ground then it's going to somehow be under the guidance of <clears throat> for me to the, do the anything, for, for me to do anything i need to get a building permit and in order to get a building permit the building inspector needs to determine if he might say you need to go get safe and adequate access which which we're fine with going to cpc and 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 having that discussion um he may say that you can only build a one family house there um and we'll have that discussion with him as well you know all of those things are all the exceptions to 200-8 are within the purview of the building inspector and he'll send us wherever we need to go from there but like i said at the beginning all uh, and and you know we're, we're willing to you know let you guys review all the material that's fine um but all we're looking for is to say that this is a grandfathered lot i know it may seem why are you even asking because it 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 conforms but we just want the determination between those two letters that's all really we're looking for. okay um thank you because that that's that's helpful to, to at least know what you're asking because it, that was not what yeah, no, it, it wasn't, we it thought wasn't, you were asking. Right. It, wasn't, it, it wasn't all that clear. I apologize for that in the notice, but really all we're looking for is a determination between those two letters. I didn't have the 2018 letter in front of me when, when we filed the petition. Um, and uh, Mr. Smith actually found it for me. And, and, and that's, that's really what we're getting to. I mean, we, we have, like I said, there's just two different opinions. We prefer the earlier opinion and we'd like to get uh, clarification on that. We just, that that's the point of the um, appeal. Have you had any conversation with the building inspector with regard to why he didn't agree with the 2018 um, appraisal? I Bill, did you ever talk? I don't think no, I, we, we tried to meet with him a couple of times. I, 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 and I don't want to put words in Jerry's mouth, but I think he suggested that we go before the board just to determine that. Jerry, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, to a certain degree, that is correct. Reason being is because uh, when Bill came to me, I told Bill, You wanted me to make a determination immediately. I told Bill, I did not have, I, I didn't even have a chance to review anything. He came back to me the very next day and said, you have a chance to review? I said, Bill, I have more work to do than just review that. It's going to take me a little bit of time to jump into it. <laughs> and Bill, I love you, but you came back again the very next day and said the same thing. <laughs> and, uh, and I ended up sending it off to KP Law. KP <laughs> Law reviewed it and uh, with, my, with what I basically sent them. I told them this is what I thought. And yeah. KP Law um, agreed with my determination. Okay, I sent a bunch of stuff to KP Law as well. Um, I think, Jerry, when we were working on that, I never heard back from them. Um, maybe he only answered you, I'm not sure, but I, I don't have any emails from, from them. Um, I, I, I think- um, We do, if, I, if yeah. I could just jump into the- Sure, please. Here. Yeah. Um, and let's see, Kathy, I think you sent that to, actually no, it went to our, planning director so let me just pull that up and i can read that into oh maybe i can let me see if we can find it here Okay, so Alec Weishelt, Weishelt from KP Law responded to um, Commissioner Noel, Daniel McKnight, our planning director, 
Thanks for CCing me on this email. I agree that the lot appears to meet the dimensional requirements for a buildable lot. I also agree that adequate access will need to be provided, i.e. Maple Road will need to be constructed pursuant to the planning board standards before a building permit can issue. Okay, so that was from KP. And again, I was not party to prior communications between um, the building commissioner and the planning director and KP. So just getting up to speed on this now, uh, I, I would say, I think, you know, we're happy to take a look at it. I've got some real hesitancies here because I mean, if, you know, given that it is what appears to be a conforming lot with an access issue. I don't want to ask. I, I would like to ask the petitioner under any kind of timeline on this. Uh, other than we want to be the winter. Yeah, we. Um, I, 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 not under any. It's, it, it's not like we need to close on this within the month. Um, you know, if you guys are looking to put us on, what was, what was the, the 13th of October? Were you guys at your next meeting? Correct. You okay with that, yes. Bill? Yeah, I mean, I would like to suggest one thing. Sure. I have a major problem here. And, and yeah. And, so, um, so like is, is, is there any way that the next time around we can meet in Perth? Bill's just having a really hard time hearing over Zoom. He's got his hearing aids in. It's really hard for him to, to do this. If, if, if there's any way that we could meet in person the next time, that would be fantastic. Um, that would be our only our only caveat on on requesting an extension. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's actually in the yeah their file book those instructions that they're supposed yeah. to. I know that, I, and I, I we realize it's a prickly issue with 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 everything, but um, given the fact that I I don't see a whole lot of interest from a butters or anything. I don't I, unless there are a butters here for this. Are, are there any? Yes, yeah, Simon a butter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm sorry. As am I, yes. Okay. I, I'm I directly don't... next door. All right. So um I get a Lily. Uh it, it's Jenna. Yeah. Jenny, would you say your name and address for the record, please? Uh Jenna Albano, 21 Maple Road. Thank you, Jenna. And can you um you have questions or comments you'd like to make of the applicant? Um, no, I mean, right now, just my only question is if they build there, like I have a well, so my well water is my main concern. What would be concerned if we build it, she's concerned about her well. Oh, we got to be hundred feet. Yeah, we, we would, we would obviously take that into consideration. And I think we're required to build at least a hundred feet away from a well, mm -hmm. which we would do when we'd have, we, we, we'd have plenty of room to do it. <laughs> The well is right there. That's a two acre lot. Yeah, the, the lot we're looking at is a two acre <laughs> lot. So, and, yeah, and I we, just thought where you guys wanted to build was on the front corner of that I, lot, which is right next to my well. I, that, that we're, that's way premature as to where we would set a, a, a house. We have no idea. Right yeah, now. I've just had, I've had three different builders approach me over the years and they've kind of showed me where they needed to build and it was never really an option because of my well and because of access mm -hmm. so that's really my only concern is my well because i'm not abandoning my well fair enough, fair enough. is it jerry is there a, is it a hundred foot setback from a well is that the mm -hmm. requirement in town yeah that's correct great thank you so there. and then did we have we had somebody else here as well Hi, yes, this is uh, Tim Sutherland, 17 Maple Road. Tim. 17 Maple. 17 Maple, do you have um, questions or comments as well? Uh, at this time, no, I was just listening for more information. Um, I too know that people have tried to purchase that property in the past and were unsuccessful with getting some sort of you know, building on there. There's a ton of conservation 
So just more of making sure we're not shoving a house on a lot. There's a lot of lots back there as you go further down Maple Road. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're not setting any precedences here. If we, if we, again, not knowing what this hearing was for, if we start approving variances, there's a lot of land on Maple Road and not a lot of ways out of Maple Road right now. Sorry. Yeah, fair enough. No, we've, uh, we've built about four or uh, five houses that have been built in there. We built every one of them. We had to go through this temporal uh, procedure. And we, we cooperated with everybody, including the neighbors, and we work with you, not against us, not against you. Against you. And, um, you know, we're really looking forward to putting a nice home in there. It's a two acre lot, it's a big lot, and we'll stay as far away from me as we can. Did you guys get that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He actually built my house. I just want to make sure we understand what's going on. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was you. Like I said, we're uh, you know at the beginning, we're not we're, we're we're not trying to do anything underhanded here or anything else like that. We're just we're look we're trying to do this one small step at a time because we know that this lot has been you know up for sale a number of different times and has fallen through for a number of different reasons. And you know I think if we take it slow and steady and we just do one little step at a time, try and help everybody out and do what everybody wants, then you know I think we can wind up with a nice finished product. Right. Well, it sounds like we need to take a look at what was submitted. There was one more, Madam Chair. Oh, was there? Um, Tina was in the chat room and uh, just wanted to note that she was in a butter. Thank you. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. yes. Tina, if you could give your, your sure. name and address I'm, for the record, please. I abut at the rear of the property. I'm 56 Oakdale, Tina DeMambro. Mm -hmm. And my only question is regarding the, well, I have two questions regarding the access. Would it be maple? <clears throat> also, would this be limited to one residential home or a duplex or multiple homes? We don't know yet. Like I said, we're taking one step at a time. This is the first step. Uh, and I, I don't mean to be evasive or anything else like that. We just, we don't have any plans uh, drawn up for, for anything yet. We want to uh, take this step first, then go see the building inspector and have a few discussions with him. If we need to go before CPC, we would at that time uh, probably have some more concrete plans of what we would want to do. Uh, obviously, we'd have to share them with everybody prior to that meeting. So I think that might be the more appropriate time for 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 those type of questions as to you know exactly what we're looking to put in there. Um, but right now we're just we're just here for this one small issue. Okay. Sorry, I can't. I I I I just I just don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Madam Chair, before you had the uh, public hearing, um, any insights from uh, planning? I find it hard to believe that these situations have never presented before. And if they have, I'm just interested in seeing if they might be able to educate me. Uh, I, have, I, have a, I have an answer for that. Um. Uh, I think we want to, if we want to, I think that was question was directed to Dave Rudolph of the CPC. Is that what you were trying to do? Yes. There, Bob? Yeah, I mean, because no. that seems to be in the kind of in the chain. Yeah, I mean, Bob, we were, I think this one came up in our August 30th meeting when we review these applications and there was a mm -hmm. discussion about it, but I think we didn't have uh I don't think we even had a really a site plan or anything to go over. So I'm kind of just getting brought up to speed on what exactly this application was about. Yeah, it and, just uh, came in to us. Yeah, I'm glad I attended because it's very helpful to understand some of the references that are being cited, you know, in the, in the code and uh, the reference to Jim DiCarlo's uh, email as well. Just helpful to get the background. So, and, and just for some more background, there, there was a CPC discussion in April of 2013 uh, relative to this. And there's also uh, a discussion relative to this January 20th of 2015. 
if you look through your CPC records, you'll find them. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so this was memo from CPC to our board um, saying that they support the decision of the building inspector and if Maple Road should be should come before the CPC for a determination of access, they anticipate requiring street improvements such as paving and extension of the water main. Um, so again, I think everything had been focused on, uh, or I think when we read this, it, we thought, or I, at least I did, I thought it was requesting some sort of exemption from um, the fair access or adequate access from the CPC, which is not something that no, we this, would this, grant. This, this isn't the proper forum for that, so we, we, we weren't asked. Right. Okay. Right. Um, in terms of the question of is this lot grandfathered in some way and to what extent? Um, I guess that's something that we can take a look at what was submitted and give that some consideration um, or give some, some thought to before we come back next month if you would like to so request an extension. Sure, Madam Chairwoman, I'd like to request an extension for the hearing until October 13th of 2022. All right. That sounds good. We will see everybody. Well, minus very important people. Yeah. And if it's possible, if it if you could please consider an in-person meeting, that would be, like I said, that would be much appreciated for my client. We um, I will say we haven't been doing those because of uh, COVID concerns and some of the logistical concerns of our board. Um, so we have not been doing that. So I do not think that would be... Um, don't think that'll be happening, but I will check with the, the members who will be there in October before we post it and see. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. No, I understand. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks very Thank much. You. Appreciate that. Um, I think that's the only things on the well, couple left uh, housekeeping items. We have minutes from last month to approve rob you have been stellar at making those motions would you be so, um, kind to do that with with regard to the minutes of the um august 11th 2020 2022 meeting of the zoning board of appeals town of north reading um and noting that the members present at that meeting are present this evening upon review of the minutes i found them to be comprehensive and um, um, uh, representative, representative of what was discussed and um, um, the matters brought before the appeals. Uh, upon that basis, I move that the minutes from again, the August 11, 2022 meeting be formally entered into the record. And I'll second. You all in favor? Bob Brain, aye. Vin Raguchi, aye. Jessica Platt, aye. All right, so that is the minutes. Um, I don't know if anyone, if people had a chance to look at the Park Street plan that CPC had circulated, which is coming in front of them next month for the um, senior residential community that is being proposed. Um, it looks like a very interesting project. And uh, we have a representative from CPC here with us this evening. Let's thank you, Dave, for coming. Um, Dave, can you tell us where, where are you in the, the permitting of that project? Uh, they, they came to us, I think, on the middle of August. Uh, um, I don't know, is it the 16th? <laughs> um, kind of the last or early August, whatever the first meeting was in August. And they were showing the plan that we had accepted before, you know, the general plan that we accepted before in the, um, for the zoning changes, if you will. Um, and two of the notable things were due to some planning, they showed the historic house 
uh, they're going to be building a new or jacking it and putting a new foundation into it, but mm -hmm. they did not move it as far away from the street as, as they um, presented, if you will, in the original plan. And so I, I raised that issue. I think Mr. Hayden, Chris Hayden also raised the issue that we'd like to see them, you know, it was an open exchange. So we, we'd like to see them move it a little bit back. The, the feedback, and I'm not sure if they have, have uh, talked with Jerry about this and stuff, was I think they needed the room for septic and things like that. So I'm sensitive to that. I do, I do get it. But, you know, one of the positives I always thought was moving that, that house is so, it's like practically touching the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it's kind of a blind corner, as everybody knows. You come around it, and you you know if someone's pulling out at the police station or something, you're like you're right on them, you know. If you're if you're if you're speeding, I guess. Uh, but I think moving it away from the street was a great idea, and everyone was on board with that. So that was just um, you know something that was just interesting. Overall, though, the plan really 100% matches matches what they originally presented. There's a retaining wall <laughs> over on the police department side you know where that roadway comes out because they uh the group there's a grade change there as everyone knows you drive down uh and they, and they they spoke to that but they are getting preparing documents uh you know preparing drawings right now that was kind of the takeaway and they'd be back in was there um how are they addressing the just traffic coming in and out out of park street that's going to be you know, significant increase in users on a pretty busy little stretch of road. They did talk about the trip uh, count and it, believe it or not, it really didn't have a, 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 an addition because a lot of the, it's an age restricted residence. So it's not like at 7 a.m. everyone's pouring out of um, like some work, you know, uh, a business or something like that are coming in at, exactly at seven or eight o'clock and then all leaving at five o'clock. So the trip dispersion was pretty marginal. And um, we talked about the sight lines because they're, they're curb cut in there and, and where they enter the street is right next to the police department's, um, you know, driveway. Uh, but, you know, they assured us, you know, and that we had, a, they had originally had a traffic um, engineer who presented this was months back and you know at the time it was acceptable to us you know what they were what they were proposing it's it's better than having it pop out say um closer to or up further near the where the library is and mm -hmm. that's more blind right there you actually have better a better sight line again if you move the historic home back a little bit mm -hmm. you have a better sight line at the police station that was that was my uh, my big question or concern with looking at it. I mean, if it gets fantastic, if we can get some elderly, you know, additional elderly yeah. housing in town, I mean, I love that. I love it. It's right down near the center. And I think it would be great if we could get some more, you know, another coffee shop or something, let, uh, reopen Damon, Damon Tavern into a tavern and Oh, some, I'm with I'm with you. You're singing my same song. Gets you know, gets some. I, I love museum, but I also want you know, the rest of us to all be able to you know enjoy the buildings too. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're putting this, you know, not dense, but another density of of community right right at the center. You know, have some resources, and we have the library, and they have the senior center right there. Um, are there going to be some consideration to walking with what the sidewalks are between there and say the senior center and the library? Just it's a really good point. So there, I think there is already a crosswalk there, but that was another one of our, um, you know, we're really interested in seeing what you're going to do there because again, that speaks to the the historic building being moved where they. Had, said they would because that opens it up a little bit and makes it safer for someone coming around the corner to see a crosswalk light or um, a person trying to cross over to to go to the to the library so um that is another another one we talked about yeah i mean just given the the population that it's meant to be serving that's i think that's absolutely it's if anyone's seen the renderings it's a it's a beautiful design and mm -hmm. it's uh and it's clever. It works with the grade that drops off in the back. And, you know, it's not like it's filling in a whole site trying to get this level pad like a 
you know, a big box or anything. It really works with the grade. So um, we're pretty pleased with how they did it. Aesthetically, I, th I thought it looked very nice from the renderings. The back of the right. lot, is that wetlands back there? I noticed that there's a good- Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I believe it gets not being touched. Yeah. So that yeah, was they give you an, did, did they give you an idea of their timeline? Bob, that's such a good question. And I feel like I just, if I could pull the minutes up and, and just, you know, and I don't have my notebook right with me from, from that night, but they must have given us something. And Danielle was, you know, going to get them in the schedule, I think, for this fall. I think they were going to come back to us. Um, I could send out an email, though, Bob, to you, to you, all of you, and just let you know what they told us. So just as a heads yeah, up. Yeah, and I, it's, it's, I, I actually personally appreciate having community. Uh, I mean, planning coming on a meeting because it's, you know, this idea of we seem to work in concert with each other in a lot of regards. So, with regard to this project i mean it's more than just the residents you know you're gonna have services going in and out um since they're gonna be that kind of a development and that's always a question with regard to traffic and access um and the other one is um who's gonna hold the maintenance contract on the the project past its construction which is always open to um change they're gonna be you know, in the event of homeowners association well i mean you know well is that what it's going to be? And then, then you know, or is the the, the building property itself manager. going to have a property manager? And are they going to, you know, when, you know, if it's not profitable, is that going to turn it? Like these things always run through minds as you're trying to um, uh, foster these, these, you know, I mean, I think it's a good thing to, to utilize that property. It's, you know, especially with, their interest in working with the town as opposed to other developments that we all right. know of that have come before the town and just you know tried to sidestep or come around the other way but i uh, i was just interested in knowing if they were what their their thoughts on break you know how far where where they see this thing really starting to break ground as well as you know what kind of a community it's going to try to foster beyond just the units okay, design I'll get you that answer, Bob, to the best of my knowledge and in, in our notes from our last meeting. It's actually two meetings ago, but we'll do that. Great. And then we will kind of put our send our notes over to you so you so you and Daniel have that. And I get another question, Madam Chair, on on just back to that last applicant. So I looked at I I was not at the 30th meeting. I was at the again at the 16th. And that's when that came up. But they must have then written that or addressed it. But back back to the original point is, I think they were, or we were, because again, I was not at that meeting, they were approving or just saying, yeah, we support Jerry's findings. But what I found was strange is what he was asking for today was something very different in a way. Um, he was asking for kind of this grandfather, you know, confirm that we're grandfathered. So it didn't seem to say that on the application. Um, so that's why I don't know if CPC's got that memo. And we, of course, support Jerry, you know, whatever. But I mean, I just don't know if that's what the CPC was looking at. Like, was it, was it, you know, the, the actual intent that was given tonight, which is to get it, to get an, to get some sort of decision on it being grandfathered. I, I just didn't, they don't seem and like before insane. Before you answer that, uh, Madam Chair, you know, what's interesting about that point is um, uh, it seems I, I'm curious to see if KP Law got the same question posed to them. I find it almost I'm, I'd be very much surprised that this kind of situation has never been resolved in, you know, in a, somewhere, you know, this isn't a new wheel that's being rolled out here. You know, right. I I mean, it's very clear. He wants it to be this because it's to his benefit. But if it's this, and I'm surprised because KP just came out and said, no, we, we support the finding of, not that this surprise that they supported Jerry's um, analysis or decision, but they didn't go into any detail as to say, like, why? Especially when you're dealing with a, with, um, a grandfathered, you know, pre-existing pre, pre -existing zoning bylaws. 
the, the it question, just like, that was not the question they asked or that was asked <laughs> for what was asked tonight does not seem to be what was on the application right or what jerry or cpc was asked or yeah, law I, was I, asked. I agree they yeah. asked about uh, does the lot conform we looked at it saw the 2.2 acres and we're like well you know it's up to jerry but you know it looks like it you know it conforms and so that's all we really weighed in on we didn't see it as a question about um again being grandfathered but it is interesting bob because aren't there so many lots in this town or any town that predate the bylaws and you know i guess technically you could use the same sorts of uh, language that they predated it so they don't those bylaws don't apply but um so it's not like this one-off kind of thing. I mean, that's a, it should be a common thing that happens. And so I think the, I think his, I think his focus on the use of the word and Madam chair kind of caught it. Um, it's, it's, he designated as an existing, a use that had been defined already as if to say that that's what brought it in because of that idea that it's, it's for it's got to stay there. Yeah. Yeah, as a I residential want to be careful purpose in our discussion here Public, that, because right. we've we've closed the pub well oh you're right well, the sorry, public sorry, hearing. Yeah. yeah we're getting we have to, to that, so so Good we're going to have to resume this conversation when we're when we're right so i would ask point. like where where should we be directing the question back to the you know town solicitor the town council and for, I, I think that's um i think that makes sense if we can kind of phrase the question, <laughs> rephrase okay. the question and put it back out to town council um, because it would be, I agree, it would be nice to have their input on it. Um, for all parties. For all parties. Including the, including the uh, petitioner oh, yeah. Yeah, because that's everybody. what they want. So yeah, I think, but I think we'll, we'll have to continue this discussion. We'll have to get, um, uh, Maria will have to watch and come up to speed and then look at it. But I agree with you, Bob, this is some, well, the issue of grandfathering has been dealt with before by you know, this board and by council, I'm sure. Uh, but it's also, it's very specific to uh, the, the statute, if you've read it is, is so convoluted, but it's, um, you know, and you have to look at it very specifically with the lot in question and, and the you know, what the applicant is asking. So we'll look at what they presented. We'll re reconvene with them next month and uh, see if we can get some assistance from town council. I think that's the end of our, our official matters. But before we go, I do want to say a very big heartfelt thank you to Vin for being with us for the last two and a half years. It has been a joy having you on the board and very much appreciate your your input and your participation and just all community that you, all that you've done to to be with us so we miss you very much and i'm very sad that you will not be here next month. thank you madam chair absolutely i'm sorry to maybe it might be fitting for for vince to move to close his final meeting <laughs> sure I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Favor. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We will see you. Well, see many of you next month. And Dave, thank you for joining us. Appreciate the yeah, appreciate thank, having and I apologize. Here. I apologize for all of you because I've been the liaison or I was assigned to be the liaison liaison a while ago. And I I just can't I can't I've just been having a hard time just syncing up, but I think, have you guys always been doing the Zoom thing for a while? Because it sure does make that a lot easier to attend. So I think I was under the misconception that there was another face meeting. So I, I a lot of times I just couldn't get down to town hall on the Thursday or whatever. We've, we've been doing Zoom since COVID and just with everyone's schedules and various, um, various issues, it's been helpful for this board to be doing remote. Okay. Um, so we have works, been- works. It works good for me, you know, definitely for, for sitting in like I'm trying to do. Yeah, and I, and I know people's schedules are so busy um, with family and work and everything else. Um, being able to just to, to come in by Zoom 
I know is is very helpful. I miss I miss the uh, the 15 minutes beforehand where we used to be able to just to chat and catch up. So I miss that part of it. Um, but I will I will pull pull the members outside of the <laughs> outside of the public hearing to see if there's any other input on that. But I expect to I expect we'll we'll be here. It's just it's it's easier for the for the board and I think for all the, for the most part for all the participants. Are you guys in person? You guys? Yeah, doing we are. This uh, meeting next week Tuesday though uh, we just happen to be going uh, Zoom, but we normally are in person. All right, sounds good. All right, thank you all. all right, have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you you Thank you. Okay. I'll be back Thank to you. visit. All right, good. All right. <laughs> Take care. Thanks. Thanks. Thank everybody. you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Thank Kathy. You. And Kathy. My pleasure. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, night. everybody.